Okay, part okay, part two of the multiple choice. Which of the following salts forms an alkaline solution in water? Right, so this is the whole you should know these. Okay, if this is our acids and this is our base. Okay, if we have a strong acid and a strong base, my salt is going to be pH seven. If I have a weak acid and a strong base, then I'm gonna end up with a salt which has a pH greater than seven. If I have a strong acid and a weak base, then I am less than seven, and the weak weak you would have to work out, okay? According to which was actually technically weaker. Right, so I'm looking for an alkaline solution, so I need it to be greater than seven, so I'm looking for a strong base and a weak acid, okay? Right, so sodium sulfate would have come from sodium hydroxide and sulfuric acid, strong, strong. Uh, lithium chloride, hydrochloric acid, lithium hydroxide, strong, strong. Ammonium nitrate, that's a weak base and a strong acid, so wrong way around. Potassium propanoate, there we go, propanoic acid is your weak acid and potassium hydroxide, strong alkaline. Okay, which of the following combinations would produce a buffer solution? So you need to have your definition of buffer. Okay, so for a buffer, what I'm looking for is a weak acid plus its salt, or I'm looking for a weak base and its salt. So if we're not sure on the weakness, go look in your dissociation constants page. Anything which is in there is weak. Okay, so uh, we were going ammonia is weak, that's weak, um, so yeah, okay. Um, sodium chloride is strong, strong acid, so that's a strong alkali and it's salt. No, um, that's a weak, performing a strong salt with a salt, giving you a strong alkali there, so no. Um, sodium chloride, that's a strong, strong salt that's been produced. Ammonium chloride and ammonia, however, there we go, there's the salt and the weak base, okay. Question 13, you'll notice I've pulled a relationship here from the data book. For which of the following reactions would the value of delta G minus delta H be close to zero? Okay, right, so here's your relationship. So what I'm looking for is if I rearrange this, how could I get something that was close to delta G minus delta H basically? What that means is really what we're looking at is the delta S. If the delta S is zero, then I take out my minus T delta S basically, and then I'm left with rearrange the equation and I could get delta H minus delta H, sorry, delta G minus delta H gives me zero. So what I'm looking for is something where my entropy change is actually zero. So what that means is no state changes. Okay, I need to have the same levels of gases, solutions, and solids on both sides of the equation. So if you look at E, you've got a solid going to a solid and a gas. So that's got a big shift in entropy, increase in entropy, so nope. Um, I've got a solid and a gas going to two gases, so again, big shift up in entropy. I've got a solid AQ going to AQ and gas, same deal. And then in D, I've got AQ and a solid going to AQ and a solid. So overall, no change in the entropy, or close to no change in entropy, which is what we're looking for here. Right, question 14, following reaction is first order with respect to P, second order with respect to Q, which of the following statements is not correct. Okay, so what we're saying here is if I looked at my rate equation, my rate equation is, that's a little k, um, we're going to sec first order with respect to P, second order with respect to Q. Okay, reaction is third order, order overall. Yes, I agree with that one, so that's not correct. I'm um, sorry, that is correct, so A is not correct is what I'm saying. The reaction occurs as a simple one-step mechanism. That can't be true. Look at this, P plus Q goes to R plus S, but I've got two um, rate orders kind of locked up with the Q, and that means I must go through an intermediate step to get to where I'm going. Um, so this is not correct. And to be clear, rate of the reaction decreases as reaction proceeds. Well, of course it does. That's, that's this idea, okay, that the reaction starts off fine, but then as your concentration decreases, 
then you get a decrease in reaction. That's that's just true generally. Okay, the rate of the reaction will double if the initial concentration of P is doubled. It's first order with respect to P, so absolutely that's correct. So these three are correct and B is incorrect. Okay, which of the following types of hybridization occur in the above compound? Right, so these carbons have very simply got sp3 okay these carbons a little bit trickier okay so they have two sigma bonds one coming out to the hydrogen one going through the middle so that's sp and then they've got two pi bonds formed from the the edge on overlap of the two p orbitals that are left so this is my two i've got sp3 and sp okay um so Okay, question 16, you just got to be very careful in your counting here. Importing starting material in the manufacture of some medicines, the gram formula mass is, right, okay, so let me just get a highlighter so we can be clear on our carbons to start with. Carbons, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. Um, my oxygen's dead easy, it's just one. Right, but then we've got our hydrogens. Okay, so hydrogens, I've got one here. 1, 2, 3, Four. Okay, I don't have one at this point here or here because this has been used to make the next connection. And then I've got a double bond here. So this carbon has one, two, three bonds already. So it's got one there and one there and that's an oxygen. So that's not, that's not needing it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So there we go. And then you just need to add up your, your formula mass. Question 17, okay, uh, so this is your entomer, so what I'm looking at is one of them in an opt optically active compound where W, X, Y and Z are four different groups, that has to be the case because here's our chiral carbon in the centre, which of the following represents the other entomer, I can never say it, the other one of this compound, okay, so what I would do, okay, fix, fix these two and then spin these over because that will give you a different orientation and that gives you your your different one okay everything else is just spinning stuff round or twisting the whole molecule like twisting the x y and z round in you know round and round and round which is just not giving you anything different right question 18 most appropriate reactants for the synthesis of this here okay so that's an alkoxide which or a sodium alkoxide which we've made by reacting the alcohol with sodium that's just something you need to know so i'm looking for sodium so get rid of sodium hydroxide um, and i'm looking for what alcohol would this be one two three four and it's straight off no branching or anything like that so butan one all okay there might have been a bit of a a bump there I was just getting lots of messages on my phone and Teams and it was blipping. So um, so I stopped and restarted for question 19. Okay, above reaction is an example of, right, you should actually recognise all of this mechanism because what we've got here is the addition at the end of a group of a cyano group, um, which is what you use to extend the chain length. And then we're converting it to a carboxylic acid. And that you should know is hydrolysis. Um, so what you're doing there is breaking by adding in a small molecule across a bond. Okay, that, that's part of your synthesis roots. Okay, question 20. We're looking for empirical formula. You're told that 18 grams of an oxide of copper contains 16 grams of copper and you're trying to work out what it is. So basically what we have here is we have copper and oxygen. Okay, um, let's take the copper first. In fact, sorry, I normally write this sideways. So I'll do it sideways. Okay, so copper, I have 16 grams of copper. I'm going to divide that by 63.5 because that's the formula mass of copper. It gives me 0 0.25. Right, there was 18 grams of the oxide. So that means I have 2 grams must be oxygen. 2 divided by 16 to get, again, rid of the differences in formula mass. Gives me 0 0.125. They've been really quite nice here because all I'm looking for now is cancel to my simplest ratio. Um, so we'll divide them both by 0 0.125 gives me that I have two coppers to one oxygen. So my empirical formula must be Cu2O, so B.